Welcome to the Southampton International Boat Show 2021. Now the boat behind me, well, it needs little introduction. It is the Swan 48. Now these boats, they are beautiful and fast and strong and I love everything about them. This is a kind of a little bit of a heart beating faster moment for me, but let's go inside and see what we think of this 48 foot beauty. And so here we are on the Norta Swan 48. First launched in 1971, this really is an iconic boat. And let us start with a large flat transom, twin wheels, twin plotters. And as you can see, lots and lots of controls. This is almost a fully automated boat and is going to be pretty easy to control from both helms. And with great safety features like this emergency stop control at the helm stations, compasses and chart plotters, you are going to be able to navigate pretty easily from both helms. Winch access and access to all the lines lead aft, and these are huge winches. This is a pedigree racing yacht, and so you're going to have some oversized winches here, a very, very large cockpit. Nice to see such a large oversized spray hood or dodger here, but all in all, a very safe and elegant place. And of course, the twin wheels allow you to have that center cockpit table gate folded and lots of space for relaxing for either the off watch crew or passengers. Now, as we walk the side decks of this beautiful teak covered boat, just take a note at the shrouds, which are solid bar steel here. The racing pedigree is absolutely apparent here. And some stats on the screen. We have a 48 foot boat, but she's got almost eight foot draft. Also light boat looking at 15,000 kilos for light displacement. That's actually not that heavy for such a large boat. Now, moving forward to the four deck, everything beautifully done in teak. I do have issues. If you've seen my Halberg Grassi review, um, I do think that in this day and age, a boat of this nature doesn't need teak, but everything, all the joinery, the teak work, everything, the finish is absolutely divine. And it's really nice and elegant to see these kind of twin lockers at the four peak one for sails and then the other for the anchor and all the anchoring gear the cockpit also has large lockers in the sole a fold down bathing platform and there is so much room here dinghy garages and i like to stow sails dinghies and any other toys you're going to want to take with you on this boat the lines of this boat are absolutely stunning swans are beautiful beautiful elegant boats with such a long pedigree of racing and historic wins in yachting racing so it's a real joy to be on board such a beautiful boat let's look at the mast here we are looking at 68 foot eye measurement here this is a big big mast but something that you would expect in a racing yacht again carbon easy option seldon mast there and the spreaders actually swept back racing instruments you can see that this boat is clearly set up for racing with the instrumentation um, easily visible the boat is set up with the self-tacking jib track, so ease of sailing if you are short-handed. But also there's obviously uh, a Genoa track for a larger overlapping head sail, as you would expect of a boat that has racing pedigree. Now let's take a swoop through the companionway steps and have a look at the interior of this absolutely stunning yacht. The interior design is bespoke and you can really see the quality that has gone into this. It is modern, airy. There is so much light here. Compare this to the light that you would see in the last boat that reviewed the Halberg Grassi 400. Again, you have a galley to port hand side, but everything here is very, very modern. It's not as traditional as you would expect from other marks, but we have the L-shaped galley on port, a large C-shaped sofa on port, and then lots of light here. Again, I'm very much fond of these port light windows that just let additional light into the saloon. The quality of the joinery is beyond reproach. Absolutely fantastic and lovely modern fixtures. I think what you do need to appreciate here is that this is a yacht that has had no expense spared on the interior design and it shows there is a real wow factor when you just look at every single aspect here. One thing I do want to note here is that there is no dedicated chart table. They have this arrangement which has two small chairs on the starboard side and a small table in the middle which does actually double as a nav station. 
and all the switching gear is here and as you would expect from a boat around this size you are looking at a 24 volt system so again it's a neat concept i'm not sure that i actually approve of it i think that i would prefer a dedicated chart table but maybe i am just too stuck in my ways but one thing that clearly strikes you when you climb aboard this boat is the amount of natural light that they have managed to get into the boat through either opening hatches or those port lights it is so light and airy and it is such a beautiful modern space now let's take a good look around the galley of the swan 48 it is what a half linear galley there is a sink on the what well, next to the companionway and then there's a linear galley which kind of curves round on port side so you've got fridge freezer there is a dishwasher here you have all the accoutrements all the things you would need in a modern galley the design is very very luxurious and very very modern same catches that we had on ruby rose those push button catches work really well and actually they really do last again it's a nice space it's well set up swan have been making boats and making this boat since 1971 so everything is exactly where it should be and is for practical use at sea and while we're just taking one last look around this amazing galley, let's just talk about the price. The price fully loaded, $1.6 million. That's 1.3 million UK pounds for a 48 foot boat. This is the top end of yacht design. It is beautiful, but you have to pay for it. Again, this is probably the equivalent of an Aston Martin if you were to kind of like try and put it into car terms. It is beautiful, it is fast, it is bespoke, and there is so much cachet behind this brand. Now let's just move forward into the master cabin. I am actually not always overly happy with having the master cabin in the four peak. It's not the most comfortable place to sleep, but this is a beautiful, beautiful four peak. And as the boat is 48 foot, you do have enough headroom at the fore end of the boat to get two pillows and sleep comfortably. So you do not have to sleep with your feet facing the anchor locker, which if you look back at the review of the Halberg Rassi 400 was something that you would need to do. Now moving aft and onto starboard out of the master cabin there is the master heads and again electric flush toilet and because we have a 48 foot boat we are now in a position where we can get a dedicated shower stall and this for any liverboard is an absolute game changer having an integrated kind of like dry room there are practical disadvantages to this but again an amazing amazing space beautiful light airy and probably more akin to a posh hotel bathroom than a marine heads and now moving aft we have twin aft cabins really lovely to see twin beds i really do not know why more yacht manufacturers do not offer this it is a very very useful addition to any cruising yacht and this boat has obviously been specified with twin berths on starboard and a double berth on port now obviously because the guest cabins are under the cockpit so you do not get full standing headroom but that unfortunately is a limitation of design but again luxurious and very very beautiful spaces so again crewing on this boat absolutely amazing and at this price point with this level of luxury you are going to get nothing but the absolute best for your guests and your crew a fantastic fantastic boat however i'm going to say this is not all perfect and i do have some criticisms that i want to level at this boat and i'll pick that up in a bit and then finally there's that big volvo engine under the companionway steps there's one small thing there's not a lot of room to work and do work on the engine here so again from a practical point of view yes you get more space but this is an area i'd like to see more space around the engine for just maintenance So the Nautilus Swan 48, what do we think? Let's look at the positives. She's beautiful, absolutely stunning. Exterior design, beautiful. Interior design, beautiful. This boat set up for racing. These are race boats. These are race boats with a whole history of winning races. Beautiful. Let me run through my thoughts on this. And this, I don't really want to court controversy with this, but I'm going to throw some images on the screen for you. This is the original Swan 48. What do I like about this boat? Look at the shape of the hull. Look how it comes in at the stern. Look, that they are beautiful. I've seen old swans and they are a joy to behold. Now look at this, look at the modern, the modern, the brand new 48. 
flat transcend. From my point of view, and this is just me, as an ocean going sailor having crossed oceans, if I'm downwind, I want the original shape. I don't want a flat transom boat. I don't, I don't. I get that the market demands internal volume now. That's what it wants. That's what you want. You want internal volume to maximize your living experience. But there is a compromise to be made. And in this case, the compromise is downwind sailing. And that is just inevitable. Secondly, look at this original. This I got this off the internet. This is a Swan 48 from 2001, and this is the modern one. The older version, flat spreaders, which basically means that you're downwind, your sail plan, you're not continually playing with the fact that you're gonna, you know, you, you have swept back spreaders and the, the, the ability to kind of wear or chaff your sails. Modern one, you're looking at swept back spreaders. And personally, if I had to choose between the modern swan and the old one, I take the old one. And that is because I prefer the, the hull shape. I prefer the shape of the rig. In addition to that, one other minor gripe is that engine bay access is limited. You have to be able to work on these engines at sea. And there is not enough space there to comfortably for me to be able to walk around and even get my hands into certain areas. So I would want to see greater access. Now I'm not a naval architect and this is only an opinion piece, but a beautiful, beautiful boat, a beautiful boat. I don't like the teak on the decks. As I said about the Halberg Rassi 400, I do think that in 2022, you need to be looking to alternatives to teak and not just have this huge maintenance job on the deck, which essentially is just a vanity project. So I do think that teak nowadays it's it's old hat but if someone said to me go out and buy a swan i'd buy a 71 i'd go out and buy one of the originals a classic because i believe that despite the fact that you don't get the internal volume you do get that beautiful beautiful hull shape and for this reason while i love what they're doing i don't like the way that monohull design is evolving to actually take a boat which has this pedigree and has won races. You go to the Swan website, it will tell you how many races, the whole litany of races, Atlantic races, the Whitbread races. They have won so many races, but what they're doing is sacrificing performance and sea kindliness for internal volume. And that is a direction that I personally do not appreciate. But this is just me, and there are other people who will completely value the opposite. So, Swan 48, beautiful, beautiful boat, like stunning, absolutely amazing. But for these reasons, as already discussed, I would want an older version. Anyway, I hope you enjoy that. That was our review of the Swan 48. I'll be back again. This is from Ho Chi Minh. I'm in the factory tomorrow filming, so there'll be some more. We're just getting loads of content for you about the new build. But again, we just wanted to kind of put these reviews out there to give you our appreciation of what is on the monohull market today. And we've had so many, so many uh, requests for older or used boats that we're also, if we've got enough interest, we're gonna start doing used boats kind of um, at different price points. So that's like another thing that's on the cards if you want it. So if you enjoyed this, give us a like, put your comments down below and I'll be back again next week with yet another review. So take care, goodbye.